Good evening. Latest statistics from the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, have revealed that 72 murders have been committed within the first two weeks of 2022. Now, this figure represents a 24% increase in murders when compared to the corresponding period last year. There was a 350% increase in the number of murders in Westmoreland, with nine murders committed since 2022 when compared with two for the corresponding period last year. Now, this statistic triggered an announcement by Prime Minister Andrew Holness that a crime-plagued section of Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland, has been declared a zone of special operations, ZOSO. The communities of Russia, Darling Street and Dexter Street will form the epicenter of the ZOSO. According to the JCF, from January 1 to 15, there was a 300% increase in murders in the Kingston Central Division, with four murders since the start of the year, compared to one for the corresponding period last year. There were increases of 100% and 80% in the St. Catherine South and St. Catherine North Divisions, respectively. In other news tonight, Prime Minister Andrew Holness yesterday moved to end the bloodletting in Westmoreland, where several murders and shootings have been reported since the start of the year by declaring a section of Savannah Lamar a zone of special operations, ZOSO. Here is Colleen May with more on this story. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says several communities in Westmoreland are in need of social and infrastructural intervention as gangs capture them and are committing barbaric killings. The parish of Westmoreland has several communities captured by gangs and currently in the grips of barbaric gangsters executing brutal terror on our people. These communities are in need of social and infrastructure intervention. Some of these communities are urban in nature and their profile fits the application of zones of special operations. Prime Minister Holness said that a vast majority of residents in these gangs capture communities such as Savannah Lamar South, where people are now living in fear. We declare a zone of special operations in Sab South to include the communities of Russia, Darling Street, and Dexter Street. I have spent time in these areas and I am aware of the conditions of terror that the people endure. I feel their pain. And I know that the vast majority of residents in those gang-captured communities, whether in Central Kingston, Augustown, or South South, are peaceful, law-abiding citizens who simply want to live in peace. However, their lives have been imperiled by criminals inflicting terror on the community. To those who are suffering, they are puzzled as to why some leaders who hold political power do not recognize the state of emergency which exists in some of these areas. He also explained how the zones of special operations will help in fighting crime. The zones of special operation will displace the criminals and disrupt their pattern of terror activities. It will give the people of these communities a well-needed break, a break from the gunshots every night, from sleeping under their beds every night, from the random and collateral murders and other acts of terror. However, the zone of special operations is a specifically designed intervention which is more geographically limited 
and focused on community building. So in addition to the security element, it has a heavy community intervention, social intervention, and community building component, which must be properly organized. Mr. Holness further said that the situation of crime in the country is not normal. The situation that we are experiencing in murder in the country and in shootings and in the possession of illegal guns is not normal. Granted, for the last three decades, we have seen this increase in murders, in shootings, and the illegal possession of weapons. And for some, they may take the view that this is the normal state of existence in our free and democratic society. This perspective also leads to not just the acceptance, but it has dulled the emotional response to this level of crime and violence. There are some people who just no longer care. It has been normalized. I still care about every life that is lost in this country. Reporting for Mellow TV News, I'm Colleen May. Thank you, Colleen, for that report. In the meantime, Prime Minister Holness has declared that partisan and political considerations did not influence his decision to retain Dr. Horace Chang as Minister of National Security in his recent shuffle of his cabinet. I asked Dr. Chang to take over the portfolio of national security uh, before the last election. It is the most difficult portfolio in the country. It requires a long-term commitment to the plans that we have in place. Uh, we are not going to change the current situation through a flip of a switch. Uh, the problems are deep-rooted and they require significant structural, institutional, cultural, and resource reform. These take time, particularly the legislative, particularly the policy, and the structure. What you're seeing before you now is a police force that is far more intelligence-based than at any time ever. What you are seeing now is a direction of resources into our security apparatus that gives us domain control on land and at sea to the point where if you believe you're going to enter Jamaica illegally and stay here, you have another thing coming. Now, Mr. Holness has faced criticism for his decision to retain Dr. Chang in the key security ministry after the island recorded a 10% increase in murders last year when compared to 2020 and an even bloodier start to this year with an average of more than four murders each day. Among those questioning the decision to retain Dr. Chang in the portfolio is presiding bishop of the Christian Holiness Church in Jamaica, Dr. Alvin Bailey, who has challenged the Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang, to show moral rectitude and resign immediately. Bishop Bailey's call came against the background of the alarming increase in the number of gruesome murders over the past few days. This, in what the bishop says, is the minister's inability to show the nation that there is a plan to bring back law and order in the island. He had stated that if he refuses to resign, the prime minister should relieve him of his duties in the interest of the safety and security of the Jamaican people. Prime Minister Holness, however, expressed that he has full confidence in Minister Chang to ensure that every Jamaican is safe. We have demonstrated the ability to 
now interdict boats with guns coming in from other jurisdictions. And we have demonstrated the capability to, addict, to interdict um, fugitives from other jurisdictions. And you will see the increased capabilities to find weapons. And all of this is being done without taking any lives. This is the beginning of the transformation of our security forces into the security forces that can be compared to security forces worldwide of the highest standard. It will take time. It therefore means that I cannot, at this point, unduly interrupt the plans laid and the institutional knowledge that has been gained, which Minister Chang has been at the helm of at the Ministry of National Security. I have full confidence in Minister Chang, in his knowledge, in his competence, and in his heart, which is to ensure that every single Jamaican is safe. Still tonight, having come under fire from some Jamaicans about the rising crime situation in Westmoreland, especially the number of murders being committed, Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang has announced plans for personnel and infrastructural improvements for the local police. We are experiencing abnormal levels of violence, in particular of Jamaica, is impatient of debate. Statistics today indicate that homicides are moving ahead of the rate of 2021. That's a significant number. Three parishes and four divisions account for most of this increase. Westmoreland, St. James, St. Catherine, both divisions, North and South. Westmoreland had the highest increase in homicides in 2020 and over 2020. They have shown in this year an increased propensity for severe violence designed to kill, maim, and inspire fear. Jamaica considered a force in taking decisive action to not only curb this rise, but restore order and public safety. Curfews, cordon and search, additional officers to the geographic division, and specialized units to apprehend perpetrators have been sent to Westmoreland. There have been some success, but more will be done. This morning's declaration of a zone of special operation is yet another tool to focus on the most violent district in the urban center in Westmoreland. It will not only restore all in the limited geographical area, it is designed to disrupt and to some extent disperse the gangsters who operate in the area. Dispersion is not necessarily welcome, but dispersing them from the areas in the clear phase of the zones of special operation will have them like rats scoring from their holes. They are easier to identify and apprehend. Dr. Chang also outlined further tools that will be used to combat the high level of crime being experienced in Jamaica. The officers of the JDF and the JCF are alert. The JCF supported by the JDF with the support of the entire government is moving aggressively to attack the criminal elements at all fronts. We'll examine what other law enforcement tools can be brought to bear on this issue in the area of the zone of special operation. How existing tools can be combined in innovative ways in the zone of special operation to reduce violence and restore peace and public order. We recognize we're in a war with violent and heartless criminals, but we will not relent. It's a war we'll win. We will continue to strengthen the Westmoreland Police Division with resources that are available in the short term. But your government is making every effort to ensure that the resource, the human and technological resources are made available to the brave men and women of the Jamaica Constable Force to overcome this cancer of violence, especially in the parishes named. So more will be done and we'll continue to work to ensure that the legislative framework is developed as well as the resources are provided to provide our men and women of the security forces the tools to overcome the challenge. Former People's National Party PNP Chairman Philip Paulwell believes the opposition will suffer consequences for its decision not to support the government's bid last November to extend the states of emergencies SOEs in seven police divisions nationwide. 
Now, this move has forced the Wholeness Administration to pursue a secondary option, namely zones of special operations in southern Savannah Lamar and Parade Gardens, central Kingston, eight days into January. Paul Well, Opposition Member of Parliament, MP for Kingston Eastern and Port Royal, which is a constituency that has been ravaged by gang violence for years, said while he accepts the position of the party as principled, it was bad politics. He said he would have broken ranks and voted with the government if he were one of the eight opposition senators who doomed a proposed SOE extension. The government, through the Governor General, can declare an SOE for 14 days, but requires a two-thirds majority vote in the House of Representatives and Senate to grant an extension. Jamaica ended 2021 with 1,463 murders, and the bloodshed has continued into the current year with an average of up to five homicides a day up until January 12. Last week's tally includes four double murders in 36 hours and the killing of a nine-year-old autistic boy in St. James whose throat was slashed. Continuing with the news tonight, the Port Antonio police have launched a manhunt for a prison escapee, Mark McNeil, otherwise called Bunny. He is of Vane Road. He escaped police custody yesterday. Reports coming into our news center are that at approximately 4 a.m., McNeil, who was in custody for house breaking and larceny, escaped while he was being treated at the Port Antonio Hospital. A manhunt has since been launched. The police are appealing to anyone with information on the whereabouts of Mark McNeil to contact the Port Antonio Criminal Investigations Branch at 876 993 3183, Police Emergency 119, Crime Stop at 311 or the nearest police station. Meanwhile, the police are reminding members of the public that it is a criminal offense to harbor fugitives. Still tonight, law enforcement officers seized one firearm and several rounds of ammunition during an operation on Orange Bay Road in Hanover yesterday. Reports from the Green Island Police coming into our news center are that at approximately 7.55 a.m., the police conducted the search of a premises in the area. Stemming from the search, one AK-47 assault rifle was found fitted with a magazine containing three 7.62 rounds. No one was arrested in connection with this seizure. Investigations are ongoing. We go now to tonight's COVID-19 update, where Jamaica yesterday recorded six COVID-19 related fatalities, increasing the total of fatalities now to 2,536. In the meantime, there were 1,220 new cases, with a positivity rate of 61.9%, pushing the overall case count now to 113,438 with 14,414 active cases. Meanwhile, Kingston and St. Andrew led the new case statistics for yesterday with 252 cases, followed by St. Catherine, it's 217 cases. St. James recorded 135 cases. Manchester, 99. Westmoreland, 76. Portland recorded 70 cases. St. Anne recorded 67 cases. St. Mary, 60. St. Elizabeth recorded 56 cases. St. Thomas, 51. Trelawney recorded 50 cases. Hanover recorded 45 cases. Clarendon recorded 42 cases. Hospitalizations also continue to increase with 486 COVID-19 patients being admitted, of which 102 are moderately ill, 44 severely ill, and 18 critically ill. And as we continue with the news tonight, the Kingston and St. Andrew Family Court on Duke Street in downtown Kingston has been closed until further notice amidst a spike in COVID-19 cases amongst employees. The Court Administration Division, CAD, says during the closure, emergency matters will be heard at the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court Criminal Division in Halfway Tree, St. Andrew. Emergency matters include child maintenance, domestic violence, as well as 
matters involving children in conflict with the law, and any other matters so deemed by a judge of the family court. The judiciary is urging members of the public to take extra precaution to protect themselves from contracting the virus. For further information, persons may contact the Court Administration Division, CAD, at 876-754-8337 or toll-free at 1-888-429-5269 or via email at customer service at cad.gov.jm. Still making Mello TV news tonight, the Jamaica Medical Doctors Association, JMDA, is pushing for scaled down operations in hospitals across the island as hundreds of its members are reportedly falling ill due to the coronavirus, COVID-19, an indication that the public health system may be on the verge of collapse. President of the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association, JMEA, John Mafood, has also warned that Prime Minister Andrew Holness was, quote, out of line, end quote, in closing the door on the possibility of lockdowns. Jamaica on Saturday recorded its highest total of daily COVID-19 infections, with 1,968 persons testing positive. There were eight COVID-19 related deaths, including a one-year-old girl. Up to Friday, 31 doctors operating within the Western Regional Health Authority had contracted the virus and were off duty, while 76 nur nurses rather, were out infected. A week ago, the Southeast Regional Health Authority had indicated that 242 healthcare workers had been infected with the virus, including 31 doctors from the Spanish Town Hospital in St. Catherine. And that's our news package for you tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Mellow TV Evening News at 8. I am Shelly Ann Hill. Do stay safe and pleasant viewing.